And next, um, or last on this panel, is Truman Lowe. Uh, Truman Lowe currently is working at the National Museum of the American Indian as curator of contemporary Native art. Uh, he is in the process of putting together the exhibitions for the opening uh, of the museum. He has been uh, a faculty member at the University of Wisconsin for 25 years and um, is a, a well-known sculptor um, and represents, which is nice to have somebody from the Midwest here uh, in this group as well, since we're so used to seeing and hearing more about people from the Southwest in this region. Well, let me first of all say what an honor it is for me to be here today. Um, this was um, a, a particular, there was a particular process that brought me here, and I think that um, it was mainly a process of, of wanting to share and wanting to talk about uh, much of the things that I'm involved in. And I think that um, initially a colleague of mine within the uh, Smithsonian, uh, Helen Sherbick, um, was involved in some of the planning of this particular conference. And, <clears throat> and somewhere along the line, uh, she must have remembered my name and my interests. So uh, as a result, that's why I'm here. And, it, and, it, and indeed, it is an honor to be here. I would basically like to thank, first of all, uh, the comments by the, the earlier uh, committee, uh, Mark, Alita, and Joe. I think <clears throat> one of the things that, that we talk about is, is how can we better explain or how can we better um, show what is native and what is native art. And I think that as a result of that, the museum, uh, the National Museum of the American Indian, which is scheduled to open to uh, the public uh, 2004, and make sure you write this down, uh, September 21st, 2004. And that particular day is, will be a recognition of, of not only national, but um, regional as well as international recognition for a museum that has been designed, that has embodied the philosophy, uh, the interests, the perspective, of the native, native people. And the mission statement of the museum is, the National Museum of the American Indian is an institution of living cultures dedicated to the preservation, study and exhibition of the life, languages, literature, history and the arts of the native people of the Western Hemisphere. Our major focus is obvi obviously um, the U.S in which is geared towards the opening but we are also working with a number of tribes and uh, that in that include the western hemisphere both uh, canada uh, central and south america the museum itself is actually um, there are four parts to the museum and those four parts are really uh, involve really evolved from the collection of the George Gustav High um, collector. And the first major part of, first phase of the National Museum was the opening of the George Gustav High Center in New York. Um, that is one of the, that was one of the, um, I should say one of the conditions of accepting this collection. There had to be a presence of the High Collection in New York. So the George Gustav High Center, uh, which we refer to in the museum as GGHC, um, is um, really about the continual exhibition of the objects that, that George collected. So that's one of the major, major um, phase one and that was completed 
primarily completed in uh, 1994. In 1998 is the second phase, which was the construction of the Cultural Resources Center at, in Suitland, Maryland. This is where, uh, this is a facility that houses uh, the curatorial, the curatorial staff and where the objects will be housed eventually. And the objects that will be housed are in excess of 800,000 um, pieces, uh, objects that, that make up the collection of, of the high collection. Now, that particular facility uh, in its completion in 98 is actually the second phase. The third phase is actually the completion of the National Museum of the American Indian on the Mall. And that is, again, will be completed in 2004, September 21st. The fourth element of the museum will happen after the, after the opening. And the fourth phase it actually involves what, what is currently being revolved to in, involved is described as the virtual museum. And the reason for that is that it is intended to ultimately connect to the native communities that have all the capabilities technologically so that they have access virtually to all the objects within the collection of the uh, National Museum of the American Indian. Um, this also means that, that there will be connection to scholars to, uh, for research purposes, scholars as well as uh, museums. The most unique aspect of the museum is perhaps described best, if I could quote the director Rick West, the, the museum will strike a unique balance between museum curatorial practice and native and traditional native care. I hope that this approach will serve as a blueprint for other museums to follow regarding the care of native objects. After years of meticulous planning and fruitful collaborations with native people, the National Museum of the American Indian is realizing its mission to provide a nurturing environment that properly honors the wishes of Native people for the care and protection of the collection. So I think that, in essence, really distinguishes the National Museum of the American Indian, um, even though there are a number of museums that have been collecting Native objects for, uh, ever since museums were invented here on the, on, in the U.S. Um, so I think that if there is a uniqueness, that, that is it. One of the things, um, the other area that I would really like to talk about is, is um, I should mention that I was given a series of, of, of areas to talk about, and I'm, I'm going to try to bring all these together at, at some point. The next area that I would really like to talk about are, are the programs that are planned and on, currently ongoing within the National Museum of the American Indian. Um, Helen Sherbeck, on joining the museum staff, has been very instrumental in bringing the, the issue of education and public awareness. Uh, I think it was talked about just briefly what is the role of the museum? What is the role of galleries? What is, uh, so in, in a way of trying to address those particular issues, Helen has, has actually made, has developed a number of programs, and some of these are currently ongoing. In fact, last, last year, just this past year, um, she was at, actually able to work with several of the cultural in institutions and brought native, uh, native talents to the national capital, uh, the nation's capital. Um, several fellow Smithsonian bureaus, such as the American Indian Art Museum's Renwick Gallery, 
and the Smithsonian Associates and the Hirshhorn hosted NMIA, NMIA's dance, music, and lecture programs in conjunction with the Renwick's exhibition, George Catlin and his Indian Gallery. And that was in conjunction with the celebration of, of Indian Heritage Month. <clears throat> Other areas in which he has um, really worked have, has brought about the, uh, the involvement of the museum as well as the attention of how one is introduced to Native culture is there are several venues that were planned and uh, such as the Kennedy Center, the Library of Congress, and the Barnes of the Wolf Trap, as they hosted NI National Museum of American Indian programs, including uh, Zoni dancers, Talos flute player uh, uh, Robert Maribel, and also she worked very diligently to bring uh, through the Library of Congress Center for the Book. Uh, celebrated native authors including Vine Deloria, uh, Lucy Tapahosa, did I say that right? Tapahunso, um, which were, who were featured authors as part of the National Book Festival. In her uh, diligence, one of the things that, that Helen is doing is, is really developing a series of programs which will not only coincide, not be a part of the opening of the museum in September, but programming that will extend well beyond the efforts of with the opening of the museum, so that she already has in place several programs and several educational programs that will be a part of, of the museum once it opens and later in the fall and the following spring that will focus clearly on some of the issues that we're talking about here today. Now, let me talk briefly about some of the programs that, as curator of contemporary art, um, there are four galleries within the National Museum. The, the four galleries really emphasize the various stages or the various um, major contributions, major traditions of the Native communities. The first gallery will actually house and actually demonstrate um, through not only objects, but not only through the art, but the histories that were, and the involvement of philosophy, Native philosophy. And that will be demonstrated particularly through um, the objects that have been created uh, that are part of the collection of, of, the, uh, of the National Museum. Gallery two is actually titled Our Peoples, and Our Peoples is really a focus on the histories, uh, the histories as the native people have told it and have envisioned it, and that too will be told through the objects that were created during that time period. Um, the fourth, the third gallery is called Our Lives, which is really the effort to, to show and to demonstrate that all of those traditions, the history, the philosophies, are still in use today, are still a part of our lives. And then the fourth is actually the contemporary, which is called the Changing Gallery. And the opening exhibition of the Changing Gallery features two artists. One is George Morrison, and the other is Alan Hauser. I think many of you are familiar with Alan Hauser, and I think many of you are familiar with George Morrison, but I think one of the things that, that the effort of that particular uh, selection of the artists is a way of introducing, it's just the beginning, I assure you. It's a way of providing to you what I would call Native American art history. 
and it, how it parallels all of art history. And these two gentlemen have been a major influence on what many of us are talking about here today, um, in particular, the individual voice of the artists and the responsibility of the artists. The artist who is now not only talking about beauty, but who talks about uh, political, who talks about, who talk about politics. Because if you really look at the reason for what is termed, what is termed earlier as political art, those are the same problems still that we have been dealing with through our, throughout our history. They haven't gone away. So in a sense, those are historic issues that are current, that are being interpreted currently. So that's what really makes up the fourth gallery and the influence of these two giants of Native art history, Native contemporary art history. Now, one project that um, I'm happy to talk about, and we're really beginning to, to see this happening. This was an idea that I had presented in conjunction with the opening of the museum. And it's been a really interesting process to bring, to make this happen. Um, as an educator for 25 years, um, actually it's, it's more close to 30 years, um, so I appreciate the 25, <laughs> is that um, the, what we are doing at the GGHC, George Gustav High Center in New York, is that we are opening this, um, this month on the 24th with two contemporary artists. And tw a total of 12 artists will be featured. The title of the exhibition is called Continuum. And these are artists who have, in my mind, have been working and have been, have demonstrated professional, uh, their professional ethics as artists who continue to change, who continue to explore, who have really evolved from the Morrison-Hauser uh, camp, if you will, and have been exploring their own interests. Uh, many of them have been educated uh, through higher institutions, art programs around the country. Um, and I think that it's, it's a way of demonstrating that these artists are here. They're here now. They have been uh, creating work for a number of years. But I would, the, the, the purpose of this series of exhibitions, which will run through the opening of the, uh, the mall building, is that it's a way of bridging from what we know now and where we really came from. So that's really the connection of these series of exhibition. In fact, I'm happy to say that one of those artists is present with us today. Um, uh, that's Harry Fonseca, um, who has been working diligently for well over 30 years, and I think has never gotten the proper credit of course, he was 10 at that age. He was, um, this, is, this was from, you know, those, those coloring books I was talking about. The person who, who brought out the coyote, who took him off the res, made him travel the world, and uh, has brought him infinite fame. But I think that Harry has, has gone beyond that, but hopefully there will be a return to that particular theme as well. So 
that's an example of just some of the artists that we'll, we'll be featuring. Um, let me close by saying that I know that for the past, um, I don't think anyone in here is older than I am, so I'll say for the last hundred years, <laughs> we have all been dealing with trying to define what is traditional, what is uh, our art tradition, what is contemporary. Um, to, from my perspective, we're well beyond that. We are. I think w if we want to continue to try to define what is, what is Native art, I want you to think about four things. One thing I want you to, as you look at any art, in particular, Native art. I want you to think about, number one, I want you to think about origin. I want you to look at that work. And the way that I've defined origin is that it's a knowledge of the past and of one's roots. The second that I want you to consider is vision. And this I define as a distinct, distinctive new contemporary interpretations of one's history. Look at that work now. Imagine that work. Number three is place. It's defined, I define it as a familiarity with one's geographical location, with the land, or with one's local environment, whether it be urban, rural, suburban, reservation. And the fourth and final is, is voice. I want you to look at that work and see if it has a unique or singular perspective on contemporary Native issues, broadly defined or narrowly defined. This is, this to me, is how you know what is the art of the Native American, whatever age. <laughs>